This is the Grade 12 RT Prac exam, Paper 1, from November 2018. And we are busy with the object question, question number 3. In our previous video, we dealt with question 3.1, where we edited our object class to be able, our T restaurant class, to be able to do things that we're probably going to need to be able to do in this question. So we just created the tool. Now in 3.2, we're going to be using that tool. So we're going to go to our restaurant uh, option. So we were working in the class. We're going to go to our main program that uses the object. So let's just double check at the top here. At the top, you will see that the restaurant unit that we had the object in has been added. And we can see that a global object of top T restaurant called OBJ restaurant has been declared for us already. So we know that that's there. It's nothing that we have to add. Okay, let's look at the question. The user must enter the name of the restaurant, the year and the number of employees, and the following input data must be provided to test. So we're going to do that. And obviously, we're going to put this into our object. Um, so we're going to enter it into our object and use the two string to display in the rich edit control. Okay, so let's look at our form. So we're going to get those three values in. And then we're going to instantiate and display um, our object in here. So let's do that. So first of all, we need to get those three values. So I'm going to create variables for them. You don't have to. You can do it straight away. But I'm going to just get variables. We want the name. We want what other, what other field do we want? We want the year opened and the number of employees. So S year opened. Those are my strings. And then the number of employees. I'll type integer. So let's get the input quickly. They've cleared the rich edit for us. So we get the name from, from this edit box. EDT company name. EDT company name. We get it from its text property. They're both strings, so we don't need to convert anything. The year opened, we are going to get from EDT year opened. That's easy enough. EDT year opened, and we get it from its text property. Those are both strings, so we don't need to convert anything. And our R num employees, we're going to get from what looks like a spin edit control. So spin num employees. SPN num employees and what property do we use of a spin edit? We use the value, which is an integer. Those are both integers. We don't need to convert anything. Okay, so that's done. Now we are going to instantiate our object. In other words, we're going to bring it to life, which is our object. Now the key here, always remember when we are using our constructor a lot of people are tempted well it's the object dot create no it's not that's the one tricky one that you must remember it's different you make it assigned to the type of object it is which is a t restaurant dot create this is the only time you do it like this after this step you can go whatever your object's name obj restaurant dot two string or whatever the other the other methods you create but with the constructor you do not say the, the name of the object dot create. You make it assigned to the type of object it is dot create. Okay, and I want to see what those parameters are. So we need a name, which we've got our own variable for s name. We've got our own variable for s here opened. Ah, so convenient that they are very similarly named. So we're sending those three values into my object to be placed into the attributes. And once that is done, we can then display it in the rich edit control. So in that we can say lines.add, what are we doing? We're saying now take our object that we've got and use the to string, which will send back a string, and we will put that string into the rich edit control. I think that will be fine. Let's have a look and see if it works. Boom, looks like it's working. Okay. So that's the first question done. Very simple, very easy. Let's go on. The user must enter the full name of the owner in the edit box and write code to compile the code. We've got, we've done an, a method that does this for us. That's why it's so few marks because it's all been done already. The, 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 the 
method that we created will do all the work for us and we must display it in the id code edit control so let's just look at the form so we're going to type in the username there and here is where we'll display the answer so it, what do we do first well we need to get the answer somewhere so i'm going to get my code i'm going to make a code variable of type string and i'm going to say okay our object is globally declared so we should have access to it here so i'm going to say our restaurant dot compile code and it's going to send back that answer but it needs a parameter it needs the full name of the user so we will make another variable called s full and before we call this i will get the name of the user from edt as an owner name i'm not too sure let's have a look there we go owner name so we're going to get it from edt owner name dot text that is a string there's full is a string and so we're going to send the owner's name as a parameter okay you could have just put this whole thing as a parameter but i'm just breaking up step by step so you can see okay once that's done S code will now have a value in it for the compiled code with all the little special nitty gritty rules that we had in the previous question. And I'm going to, in the EDT ID code, in its text property, I'm going to place this S code. I'm going to display it just like that. I think that's all you have to really do. Okay, so let's run it and see if it works. Remember, when we're doing this, this is, although this is this question, we first need to create our object so we still have to click on that button before we can click on this one so what name are we using so if we use peter van Wyk, um, we can then put it in to our program there i'm going to just paste it there there's peter van Wyk identification code there we go so s gets the first letter from there then it gets the last two letters the last two letters of the surname and then the year that it opened Okay, so there we go. I'm actually going to over here just to make my life easier. So I'm going to type it all the time. I'm going to put Peter's name there in the text property just to start off with. So that we don't type it for the next question, just to save me there. Okay, so let's go to 3.2.3. Okay, the user must enter the number of employees to be added using the edit box. Okay, so there's an edit box. They're going to type in a number. So let's say they type in 30. We're going to add some employees. Great. Code has been provided to declare a maximum number of employees of 40. So we can't go over 40. So we've got to find out how many employees there were in the that they want to add. And first, before we add them, we need to determine if we can exceed the number of employees. If we do, then we can call the relevant method to increase it and display it. So if you remember, in our first part of the question, our first 3.1, we've used our constructor, and we've used compile code, and we've used our toString. We haven't used these two methods yet, which we are probably going to use now. They will never ask you to create methods that you never use. So we've ticked these two off. We're definitely going to have to use these in this method okay you could use a method more than once but you have to use every method at least once they won't ask you to create a method and not ask you to use it so let's do this extract the number of employees from the edit box it's tiny steps that's the edit box we want to add and we want to keep it as an integer so let's create a variable there's our max employees constant Okay, and over here I'm going to say variable r uh, add of type integer, and this is going to be the number of uh, people that we want to add. So we're going to get that from the edit control add dot text, but this is a string and this is an integer, so we must convert it from a string to an int. Okay, very good. Step one done. Okay, determine if the extracted number of employees can be added without exceeding so we must go fetch the number of employees now it's tempting to want to fetch it from here but we need to use our class and we need to use the methods that we created and one of those is the get number employees so that's where we're going to get the number of employees not from there so i need to ask okay if our object 
dot get number of employees so that will return the 25 if I add on what we want to add okay if I take those two if I get the 25 plus whatever I want to add if that is less than our max number of employees our max constant we are allowed that if that is less than I'm assuming we could also make it equal to it's allowed to equal that amount if it's less than that amount then we have enough people that we can add without exceeding our amount if that happens then we're all good then what do we want to do well we want to actually make this happen so I'm going to say my object dot increase number of employees this is the procedure and how much are we increasing them by by this add amount so we say let's say we've got 25 employees and we want to add another 10 well 25 plus 10 is 35 that is less than my 40 so therefore it, it's okay it, it, it's it's allowed and so I will take that 10 and say hey increase my number of employees by 10 it, it was it was sanctioned it was allowed so we will do that and then we must display, I think we've got to display the answer, increase the number and display what this value is, the new value in the edited edit box. Updated, sorry, updated. So we're going to say edt updated dot text. You are now going to equal to the number of employees. Can we get, get number of employees? Because it's changed now, it's a new number. But that's an integer, that's a string. We must convert it from what it is, an integer, to a string. Okay, so that's that step done. That's if it's allowed. If it's not allowed, else. This means that the number that we want to add, let's say this is 25 and we want to add another 20. 20 plus 25 is 45. It's over our max amount. If it's over our max amount, what do we want to do? If we we just want to say, hey, put a message in there saying you can't do it. So if we're adding 4, it goes to 29, that's all legit. But if I'm adding 20 to 25, exceeds maximum. So we're going to say ET update text. We can just type in the text exceed exceeds maximum. Exceeds maximum. There we go. Okay, I think that is all we need to do. Seems quite simple. Let's run through our code. So we first, there we go. We create our code. Now we want to add five people. That should go up to 20. And it's all legit. So now it's, it's at 30. So if I add on another nine, it should still work because now it'll be 39. Hey, 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 but if I add just five more, we're going to exceed our 40 limit. Oh, exceed the maximum. And you'll probably find that uh, the number of employees will still be 39. We haven't actually changed, increased the number of employees. We haven't called that. Okay, so there we go. We have used our object. I think that's all. There we go. So there's our um, question where we use all of our methods. Let's just confirm quickly. Did we use that function? Yes, we did. Did we use that constructor? Of course, we had to. Um, we used that. We used that. We used that. We used all of the uh, methods that were created or that were there already. So therefore, we have ticked all the blocks. Okay. So there's our object. For the first part of this question, as well as the other questions in this question paper, as well as other exam papers and lessons on Delphi, please go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, look at the playlists that will guide you on where you can find everything that you need. Like us on Facebook and Twitter so that you can find out whenever we post new videos. Um, and remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.